Hello everyone, today we are going to be walking through how to use Vapey tools. As many of you know, functions have been depreciated in Vapey and I've heard from a lot of you now that watched my last 40 minute Vapey tutorial that you needed some assistance with navigating these new tools. Well, don't worry, in this video I'll be doing just that. We'll cover what they are, how they work, and how you can build your own tools using a cool example. For those of you who don't know, my name is Jonas Massey, founder of Esplanade AI. We turbocharge businesses by leveraging cutting edge AI technology to streamline businesses operations and enhance customer experiences. But without further ado, let's get straight into this video. So first and foremost, what are tools? Tools are the same as functions. They just follow older syntax as per OpenAI spec. A tool structure includes the type, messages, function details, any asynchronous behavior, and a server URL. The function defines the tool's purpose and parameters. So if you were met with this orange box following my last video, we now have tools in place. Tools can be customized and expanded to create more interactive and efficient user experiences uh, within your VP Assistant. Now, VP tools work by allowing the Assistant to perform specific tasks through configured functions. Each tool, like I mentioned, includes the type, messages, function details, as well as a server URL. When a tool is called, the assistant sends a HTTP request to our server URL, which then processes this function and returns a JSON response. This enables VP to handle more complex tasks and provide interactive user experiences like I mentioned. So let's head over to our VP dashboard and get into building one for ourselves. Now there is some tutorials out there going through VP's new tools. Um, they're really good, but for this example, we'll be doing the same only for a slightly more complex use case to give sort of a more detailed understanding of tools and real world utility that they can provide. First up, we need to create an assistant. Our assistant today will be a pizza store who will receive calls and query our database to return a user's last order details or create a new one if they don't exist. I'll just name it pizza assistant and we can use a blank template, hit create assistant. For this new assistant, we can enter our first message and system prompt we'll change the provider to a cheaper version of GPT-4.0 cluster, um, or you can use mini now. Um, VP has GPT-4.0 mini cluster, which is good for smaller specific use cases. Uh, it's very cheap to run as well. First message, say something like, hi, this is Tony's Pizza. How can I help? I know a very generic pizza store name. System prompt. Now this is a pretty simple system prompt, but essentially what we're doing is we're giving it a, a task, which it's a receptionist that will receive inbound customer calls. We might actually just change this to a more sort of realistic pizza scenario. Um, and then we'll ask, or it'll perform these tasks. So it'll ask for the caller's number. We'll use this number to query our database, which in this example, it'll be just a simple spreadsheet. So I'll show you that now. This will be our little database. Now in a real world scenario, this will be way more complex using a different database. Um, but as you can see, we have some fields here like custom ID, name, number, and their last order. What we're doing is we're going to be querying the number to get the customer details and more specifically their last order. And then we're gonna return the results. Um, so you notice here I have a tool name. We haven't created a tool yet, but this is what I'll call it. We can go ahead and publish this, head over to our functions and we'll need to create a tool which we can select. To create a tool, we'll head over to the left here and go into tools. We'll hit new tool and we have three options here to select from. The first is to provide a back end endpoint. Uh, this might be a Python script uh, you have locally or something like that. Next, we have a make endpoint, which we'll be using today. This will be our make webhook URL. 
And then finally, we have a Go High Level workflow URL, which we won't be using. These all operate the same. We have a URL endpoint that points to external logic. For now, let's just use make. So in make, we'll set up a webhook like so. We'll search for webhook and custom webhook. We'll add a new one and do tool pizza, save that. And we'll be given a webhook URL. This is our endpoint URL. So we can copy that address, hit okay. And we'll paste it in there hit save and we'll hit next. We'll build our schema now. This is basically how our request is structured. We can put in our properties here and their description. So think of this as what the assistant needs to collect to send into our make scenario. So in this example, it's gonna be our customer's or caller's number. We can name that number and do a brief description. The user's phone number. After that's done, hit save. And you can collect multiple properties here. So if you're building a more complex tool and need to pass in multiple properties into your make scenario, you can do that. For now, we'll just hit next. And this is where we'll name our tool. So the tool name is what we're calling in our system prompt. So I had database and we can just do a brief description. Check the database for an existing customer and we'll hit create. Right now we've just built our tool. Now we can quickly run this in make and see what our tool provides us within our make server. What you do is quickly come back to your assistant and under functions, now that we've created our tool, we can select it. We'll hit the database and we'll hit publish. This is good to go. We'll talk to the pizza assistant, but first make sure that your make scenario is running so we can receive the data, we'll run. And now it's waiting for our call to send through some data. I'll just quickly run through the call. Hi, this is Tony's Pizza. Was it a pickup or delivery? It was a pickup. Great. Can I get your phone number to look up your last order? 04123456789. It looks like we don't have any previous orders from this number. Cool, so we ran through the call and as you'll see in our webhook, we have an output bundle in our messages. We'll have our tool call one and our function argument here is the number. That's perfect. So now we can use this variable to query our Google Sheets over here. And to do that, we'll make a Google Sheets search rows module, hit Google Sheets, and this could be Excel or a database, um, but for simplicity's sake, I'm using Google Sheets. Scroll down to search rows advanced and we'll hit that. Set up your connection and we'll locate into our spreadsheet. To do this, we can just select from the list. Under your drive, you'll choose where your sheet is located. And mine is located under two folders named database. The sheet ID, we only have one, so we can select sheet one. And finally, we need to query the Google Sheets. To do this, we can use some SQL language, it's pretty similar. So if you're not familiar with SQL, we could just do a select from or select where command. And what we need to do is select where is gonna be our column specification. So if we look back in our Google Sheets, column C is where we'll be searching because this contains our number. So search star where C equals, and then in a single quotes, we'll go down to tool calls under function, argument, and number, and single quote, and we'll hit okay. This will return either a row with details or an empty row depending on whether our customer exists. Now with a tool, this is important, we need to send a response back to Vapey. So after we query our Google Sheets, we need to send the results back into our Vapey server so the assistant can use this information when interacting with the customer. For this, we'll be adding two webhook responses and it doesn't have to be two, it can be a single one. But for this use case, we need to send two 
because the Google Sheets will either have a customer or not have a customer. We'll add another module and we'll create a flow control router. And as you can see, we have two modules pop off the back. First one, we'll do webhook and a webhook response is what we're looking for. So we can click that. The body has to be in a certain JSON construct. So what it is, and you can find this in the Vapey documentation over here. So this will contain results, uh, including the tool call ID and the result string. We can just copy this, paste it in our body. Now we need to fill out some things. So the first one will be the tool call ID. This is found under tool calls ID. We can put that variable in there and our result string is going to be the last order result because we're querying for getting a customer's last order. For example, if I were to call up under this number, my last order was two garlic bread and one large pepperoni. And what we'll do is we'll query for that and then relay this information back to the customer. So we'll say something like, would you like to repeat your last order? So we can say something like, would you like, and then we can pass in the last order text. As long as you got this body structured this way where results has an array of tool call ID and our results, and then closing that off, we'll be good to go. We'll hit okay. And now we need a secondary webhook response. This will be if the customer does not exist in our database. Similar thing, we'll paste in the structure. We'll do the tool call ID, which can be the same. And the result we're just gonna have as a string. We're not passing in any variables. What would you like to order? We'll hit okay. Now to determine what path to take from this router, we need to add a few more things and then we're done. To do that, if you don't know how, we can add a filter to filter in the responses. Click on the line and we'll have a label condition and a text operator which will change. But for the label, for the top one, this will be if our bundle is not empty. So our query returns a customer's details, which means they exist. So we can say something like if bundle equals one, so the Google Sheets module will return one if the customer exists. And then our condition is going to be total number of bundles. And then our operator is going to be a numerical operator equal to one. Basically, this filter is gonna filter in between a result of one or zero, one being the customer exists and zero being the customer doesn't exist. So we'll set up a secondary filter down here to determine that. Say something like if bundle equals zero, and this doesn't matter too much, it's just the name of your filter. The condition will be the same, total number of bundles, and we'll use a numerical operator equal to zero. And hit okay, and that's it. We just created a whole tool that queries our database and returns a user's last order, or doesn't, which will prompt the assistant to ask the user what they would like to order. All we have to do now is test this bad boy out. I'll call up as an existing customer, and I'll call up as a non-existing customer. One thing I forgot to mention before we test this is just go back into tools. And for something like this, we need to wait until the whole tool has completed. And that's where asynchronous comes into play. So this will define whether the assistant will move forward or wait for your server to respond. We need our server to respond uh, that the customer exists or doesn't first. Uh, this will avoid interruptions and things like that. So we can just check that. We'll hit save. Now we can come back to our assistant. I just changed a few things here so it flows a bit nicely. And we'll run our make scenario. Hi, this is Tony's Pizza. Was it a pickup or delivery? Pick up, please. Great. Can I have your phone number, please? Zero four one two three four five six seven eight nine. Would you like to repeat your last order for one X large pepperoni? Uh, I'll place a new order. Sure, what would you like to order? Okay, so as you can see, I called up under this number and it repeated my order, one X large pepperoni. We can format this to sound a bit nicer or change the prompt. Um, so it repeats the order. Um, 
using one times or one uh, large pepperoni instead of using X, but that's okay. Next, we'll call up from a different number. Um, so I'm not in here and then it should return. What can I get for you? Hi, this is Tony's Pizza. Was it a pickup or delivery? Pick up, please. Great. Could I get your phone number, please? Zero, zero, zero. Could you please provide the complete phone number? Okay. Uh, zero, four, seven, three, zero, eight, five, eight, five, four. Thank you. What would you like to order? All right, it was a bit smart and it's new. I wasn't giving it a full phone number, so I gave it uh, another random one, um, which wasn't on our database. And then, as you can see, it went through the funnel here uh, and returned an empty result or what would you like to order? But we'll leave it at that, guys. So today we covered what these tools are, how they work, and how to build one using a pizza restaurant example. Hope this answered some of your questions you did leave in the 40 minute tutorial. Be sure to check that out if you haven't. If you have any questions regarding these AI voice assistants, be sure to drop me a comment below and I can help with that. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you're looking to stay ahead of the AI curve. I've been doing a lot of these AI voice assistants recently and I'll have a cool new video coming out next week where I clone myself, uh, so stay tuned for that. Of course, if you're a business owner looking to integrate some technology like this yourself, be sure to check the link below and you can work with us. But that's all for today, until next week.